Hey guys, so we're going to watch a small update about the five passengers that are lost at sea that went to go visit the wreckage of the Titanic. They still have not been found yet and their 96 hours of breathable air time is believed to be expired. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. There is a press conference that's supposed to happen around 2.30, I believe they said, Eastern Standard Time. So if there's any significant updates, I'll come back with another video. For that missing submersible with five people on board, a U.S. Navy salvage system that can bring items up from as deep as 20,000 feet has arrived on the island, on an island off of Canada's Atlantic coast, but it could take days before it gets to the search zone. If estimations are correct, the 96 hours of oxygen on that sub has run out and there is still no sign of it. Transportation correspondent Gio Benitez is in Halifax, Nova Scotia with the very latest. Search and rescue crews dealing with treacherous weather looking for that missing submersible. The effort still underway even as the clock runs out. Those 96 hours of breathable air expiring. The U.S. Coast Guard zeroing in on an area where Canadian aircrafts detected banging noises underwater with sonar on both Tuesday and Wednesday morning. But the search turning up nothing so far. Still, the Coast Guard insisting they won't give up. This is a search and rescue mission 100%. The entire search area massive, twice the size of Connecticut and two and a half miles deep. A team of experts analyzing those noises to help determine the source and the location. The ocean is a very complex place. Obviously, uh, human sounds, nature sounds, and it's very difficult to discern what the source of those no noises are at times. Even if the sub is found, if it's underwater, there are no ships currently on the scene that could lift the 23,000 pound Titan. Overnight, a French ship arriving with a deep sea robot called the Victor 6000, equipped with cameras and arms that could free the sub if it's stuck, but it cannot lift it to the surface. A Navy deep salvage system is still on land in Newfoundland days away from getting to the search zone. People need to realize that finding them is the first step. They still have to raise them off the bottom. They still have to get them on the ship and they still have to unbolt them. Crews working around the clock to find those five people on board. Billionaire Hamish Harding, businessman Shazada Dawood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman, Titanic researcher and diver P.H. Narjule and the CEO of OceanGate, Stockton Rush. One of the most critical issues, the below freezing temperatures that far underwater. Assuming the life support system is still working, my biggest concern at this point would be hypothermia. Your body uh, will start shivering uh, to generate heat and uh, that will use up more oxygen. Retired Navy doctor Dale Mole, who studied these scenarios and the effects on the body, warns carbon dioxide builds up to deadly levels. They'll get more and more drowsy. They might experience some headaches, uh, but uh, eventually, whether it's from hypothermia or elevated carbon dioxide level, um, they will go to sleep and that will be the last consciousness that they have. This as OceanGate faces new questions about the safety of its Titan submersible, an experimental system not yet certified. At least one former employee expressed concern about the sub's carbon fiber exterior back in 2018 in court filings, alleging that tiny cracks could become bigger and bigger with more dives, essentially wear and tear because of the pressure. The dispute was settled out of court. And transportation correspondent Gio Benitez joins me now from Halifax, Nova Scotia for more on this. Gio, this story has captivated the nation. Can you tell us what is the latest on the search and rescue efforts? So, Mona, right now, this is a pretty grim and sad reality for these four families of these people on board because, quite honestly, it now appears that that life support uh, has run out, that oxygen on board, that breathable air. And so that, of course, is something that they're going to have to deal with now because we were estimating some 96 hours, but that was a, a high estimate for that breathable air because if they panicked at all in any way, that lowered the amount of breathable air in, in that capsule and if they were cold the body needs more oxygen for that and needs more air for that and so that would have lowered things so it's just a, a really sad uh, ending to this uh, the Coast Guard at this point has not officially said that this is a recovery mission they are still in the search and rescue phase but from what we know from their own estimates we've reached uh, past those 96 hours of breathable air
So with all that information that you're learning, including the fact that uh, we believe, sadly, that the 96 hours of breathable air has likely expired, do you think that these remote operated vehicles realistically could make a difference at this point? Well, that's part of the problem because we know that the French vehicle that's out there, it can go underwater and it has that arm that could free uh, the sub if it were stuck, but it can't carry it up, right? So the hope would be that if it finds it, they could free the sub and then the sub would rise to the surface. But that journey alone, Mona, would take two and a half hours to go from the bottom of the sea all the way to the top. Uh, so, so there's that concern. We do know that on St. John's right now, uh, there is a Navy, a U.S. Navy deep salvage system, but that needs to be boarded onto a ship and secured, and that takes 24 hours just to do that, and then it takes two and a half days or so to get to that search site. So it, that technology is there, but would it have made a difference? Probably not, because they don't even know where the sub is, and if you don't know where it is, you can't send anything down there to actually recover it. And Gio, do you have any idea on when the Coast Guard will switch this mission to a search and recovery mission rather than um, a, a rescue plan? Uh, so right now we know that uh, later this afternoon around 2.30 there is uh, a Coast Guard press conference and um, we are likely going to hear that there perhaps. Uh, we will see what happens. Um, I, it certainly doesn't look like they're holding on to, to much hope at this point because it's been so long. We're talking about now going into the fifth day of this with four days of breathable air on that uh, sub. And Gio, before I let you go, what are the conditions like this far below the surface and how do you think it's impacting the search? So we know that the temperatures down there are below freezing, and that's what the concern was with them being cold and getting, uh, you know, suffering from hypothermia and having to use all of that oxygen just to warm their bodies up. Um, so there was that concern down there. And of course, it's very, very dark. So even if you're sending those robots with the cameras, it is pitch black. I mean, you've seen those videos of the Titanic. That requires so much light just to see that down there because we're talking about two and a half miles under sea. Above water, the conditions were treacherous, too. Uh, we know that overnight uh, there were really harsh conditions on the water with big waves. That makes it incredibly difficult, especially if you're hoping that that sub was already floating on the surface and that they were they were hoping that they could just find it there and grab it so that they can open it. Uh, that doesn't appear to be the case just yet, but they, again, are still searching because it is a massive, massive area.